Fellow Anglians, like you, I have followed the events that has transfixed our wonderful country during the month of April as a result of events that emanated from the murder of a resident of Anguilla. It is widely known across the world that Mr. Gavin Hapgood, a tourist to the island, murdered Mr. Kenny Mitchell, an employee at Anguilla's first five-star luxury hotel. Mr. Mitchell, Kenny, was a hard-working young man, fun and entertaining, but most of all, he was a son, a brother, an uncle, and more importantly, a father. The circumstances that led to Kenny's encounter with Mr. Hapgood may never be truly known, but what we know for certain is that Kenny was murdered in the presence of a number of people, namely Hapgood's wife and at least two of Kenny's fellow employees who, based on their statements, begged Mr. Hapgood to stop while Kenny was still alive. The events that occurred post-murder understandably caused anger in Anguilla and across the diaspora on both sides, and understandably so. It is well and good to tell persons to control their emotions until some tragic event occurs which involves a family member or close friend. We must always seek to place our feet in the proverbial other man's shoe. Ladies and gentlemen, many friends and sympathizers of Gavin have referred to Angola as an asshole country, which has exacerbated tensions. His ability to remain at a luxury property in anonymity and the optics surrounding his court hearing, arrest, and bizarre release created an atmosphere of mistrust for law enforcement and the judiciary. The silence of government, the Angola Tourist Board, and the controversies surrounding the parliamentary secretary escalated tensions and mistrust. The result is that a narrative of Anguilla is being created by others that does not depict who we are as a people and what we stand for. Firstly, Anguilla is not a third world asshole country. We are smart, entrepreneurial, innovative, and we are people that believe in each other. And while our standing as managers and supervisors of our luxury properties have eroded, and while our prominence and dominance of the wholesale and retail sector and even the loss of our prideful financial institutions have dampened us, we remain resolute and firm in the belief that we are proud, strong, and we continue to welcome visitors to our shows. Our hospitality is not trained. We were born hospitable people. It is in our DNA. And so, while Kenny was not born here, we sympathize with his family and we empathize with those who knew and loved him. We also have love and appreciation for everyone who visits Anguilla, for vacation or just a day trip. So we are appalled when we read in a major global publication that Anguilla has racial tensions, which is far from the truth. In all my years, and there are many, Anguilla has never had racial tensions. Even though our st the standing of the Anguillan people as leaders in the business community and the hospitality sector has diminished, we continue to embrace our visitors. Gavin will not destroy all that we have built. We cannot allow him to change us as a people, and he hasn't. This event has placed the spotlight on the wheels of justice, and it is apparent that there is a real need for criminal justice reform. Urgency of reform is a priority especially when one takes into consideration an 18-year-old Anguillian male's name is published in the newspaper after he is arrested for a joint, and even if Bale has to surrender his travel documents and sign into the Royal Anguilla Police Force, while someone who murdered another enjoys the luxury of what we have to offer under an alias and is eventually allowed to return to the comfort of his home in another country in less than a week. Never mind a U.S. government representative pledged to return him for his trial. The optics and the commensurate silence has led us to where we are today. So where do we go from here? For one, the aforementioned criminal justice reform must be done, and must be done alongside the people of Anguilla. The people of Anguilla must play a meaningful role in this reform. The government of Anguilla must embark on an aggressive, public relations campaign and it must begin now. We already already have a public relations firm on retainer at a significant cost to the taxpayer. If they are unable or unwilling to take this Herculean effort, then get another. 
All we have is our reputation, and we must do everything to protect Anguilla's image. We must be the defenders of this beautiful land. We must never allow others to write his story. We must be the authors of our story, and we must always be honest when doing so. This appears to be a watershed moment in our history. Let us come out on the other side better than before, because Anguilla is bigger than all of us, and we must never again allow our name to be tarnished in this manner. I thank you.